When you buy shoes online, it is very easy to track the delivery. You receive notifications in your mailbox, and you can connect to an online link. This parcel business is well processed and relies on efficient road shipment. But if you switch to the industrial B2B world, things are much more complex. Imagine you are the head of operations for an automotive manufacturer. You need to ship spare parts from China to the US. You ask one of your transport providers, who will then outsource to a local Chinese trucker, then a shipping line, then a US trucker, and then a customer expert. Globally, if you are shipping thousands of products every day, you need at least 10 main transport providers outsourcing to dozens of local partners. In the world of multimodal freight, data is highly fragmented. And this is a bad dream turned into a nightmare because transport providers rely on legacy systems producing unreliable information. Industrial shipping struggle to answer two key questions, which are crucial for the bottom line. Where are the goods? And when will they arrive at the destination? When they face a 10-day delay and they need to stop the production line, they lose several million euros. Wake here is a SaaS platform bringing real-time visibility on B2B transport flows across sea, air, and road. Our platform consolidates all transport providers, including shipping lines, airlines, and forwarders, using API and EDI connections. But consolidation alone is limited in terms of data quality. So we pair providers' information with real-time and reliable tracking. We use satellite data to track ships and planes, and we connect to trucks' GPS and IoT devices. But we are not a hardware company. We are a software with a turnkey solution. And more importantly, we use data science to predict times of arrival by taking into account external factors like real-time traffic or events, and we send alerts to operational teams directly to their smartphone. I grew up in the port environment, and I've seen how disorganized B2B supply chains are. My father worked on the Panama Canal, and he's now president of a port operator in France. My co-founder Loic was data scientist at PwC where he worked on supply chain optimizations for several enterprises. We have strong industry expertise to leverage technology into this high potential market. Back to our example. As head of operations, you experienced a 10-day delay and you lost several million euros. Let's move to Wakeo to the demo to see what happens. After logging in, you reach the first feature which is a global map of current multimodal shipments. It consolidates multiple transport providers into one single screen. From here, you can click on one specific shipment. You reach the whole tracking process with data coming first from transport providers. And then we leverage independent satellite data and data science to predict times of arrival. As soon as the delay is more than one day, we send an alert to operational teams so that they can anticipate. In the end, the analytics feature objectifies performance. The goal is to reduce as much as possible the transit time. The longer it is, the more inventories the shipper needs to finance. Back to the presentation, please. At Wakeo, we change the supply chain from reactive to predictive. And we bring three key aspects to our customers. First, anticipation, to secure production lines by sending alerts to operational teams. Second, reliability, to reduce safety inventories 
and save up to several million euros a year. And third, we improve customer experience by providing proactive information to the end customer. Freight forwarding is worth $400 billion globally. Most players in freight focus on continental road shipment. We are complementary to this market. We focus on multimodal overseas shipments. Some players talk about being multimodal, but we have a unique tech to guarantee data quality and predictability for international shipments. Leading industrial companies ship goods worldwide, and Wakeo is what they need. We launched commercially six months ago when we joined the Texas Paris program. We have already onboarded four international companies, which combine 45 billion euros of revenues. We are building the predictive supply chain. If you are a leading industrial company, join us at wakeo.co. Thank you very much. Okay, judges. Great, sorry. Um, it, 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 at first it looked very familiar, but then I was just checking that we have actually seen it in our fund. Um, so that may be why, but I'm trying to remember from the US in particular, there are some players doing some pretty similar things who've raised a lot of money. Is that correct? Or? So uh, obviously I think you're uh, talking about a player like Flexfoot, for instance. Uh, which is a, a unicorn today. So we have a different model from Flexport. Uh, Flexport is basically a digital freight forwarder. So they are organizing transport from point A to point B. So they have assets, they have warehouses, and they need to reduce and to be performing. We are only SaaS, so we are software, and we are not operating. But, but there are still other SaaS players in this space as well, right? There are two US competitors, yeah, absolutely. So you guys mentioned that uh, you're combining information from multiple sources as well as uh, um, using sensors that are going to have to be purchased, installed, and then taken back. How are you guys going to be able in a, a capital efficient and maintain a heart, uh, healthy margin uh, while providing all of this to your clients? Because it sounds like you'll need a very large team and also um, uh, a large amount of sensors in order to do that. Yeah, so one key point is that 90% of our tracking is hardware less today, meaning that we use data from transport providers and external data, notably satellite and AIS data, which are not uh, hardware data, obviously. We do need for some use cases, which are generally for high value products some sensors, and we are the software interface to integrate multiple sensors technologies. Um, and in terms of the APIs and the information from your uh, shipping partners, are they generally happy to share with full transparency all the information? Because, for example, I've heard of a story that a uh, shipper committed to ship something by boat because it was sensitive to uh, shaking and it ended up shipping it by train because it was cheaper. And I'm assuming uh, uh, third party logistic companies do that often and wouldn't be so happy to um, collaborate with a system that's gonna get them to, to be much more easily caught. So is your question regarding transparency from shipping line? Uh, yeah, I'm just asking how, in general, happy your partners are to uh, share the location information and uh, information from their API in order to provide better visibility to your customers. Okay, understood. So, obviously, there is something quite cliche about this industry. Uh, it is widely said that shipping lines are not playing the game of transparency, and that's partially true. Um, once we say this, uh, we, really, we have two key aspects. First one, that we leverage the purchasing power of our customers. We are only working for enterprises. Our product is designed for enterprises. So when they represent 20 million euros or 100 million euros of sales for transport providers, they need to comply working with Wakeo. That's one aspect. Second one 
when I talk about uh, real-time geolocation, we are not talking about data provided by shipping line. We are talking about a security standard to avoid collision between ships. And so that external service providers that we get data from. So shipping lines don't give any access to this data. We source it independently. How do you deal with uh, pricing? Do you, do you play the different providers against each other to provide a better price, or you only deal with the logistics and the timing through the freight forward? We are invoicing the industrial shipper directly. So he has a set of, par of partners, and we sell it on a volume basis. For instance, we start on a small scale perimeter, let's say 200 or 300 containers a month, and then we ramp up from 200, 300 to several thousand containers. So pricing is obviously linked to the volume that we track with economies of scale. Uh, that can be several dozens of euros for small scale projects on, on a container unit, I mean. And then we can go to several euros per container on large scale projects. But longer, t longer term, do you intend to be a, a marketplace playing these different freight forwarders against each other, or you only want to be a, an integrated digital freight forwarder? Could you repeat the question, please? L longer term, do you want to play the different providers against each other to get a better price, or do you only want to provide better logistic information as, so that you have an edge as a digital freight forward? So we really want to stay 100% SaaS and software. What do we do? Well, tracking is a way to get to analytics because we have all those traceability data points. So we know exactly using that provider or the other provider if you have 62% of on time or let's say 40% of delayed shipments. So what we are able to say to the, sh to the industrial shipper is we can reduce your lead time. That's a global time from point A to point B. And this is directly inventories they need to finance. Because the longer it is, the more inventories they need to finance. So that's how we really help them through analytics. We don't want to go into anything operational. That's not our core expertise. We really want to work on data to optimize inventories and to produce reliable and proactive information towards B2B customers. But to, as a result of that, though, you become a sort of uh, master sheet for which services are good and bad, right? I mean, that's how you're going to optimize that time. You can't make a bad shipper good. That's not your job, right? No. So it, in effect, you are uh, acting at some point as a, as a broker of these services, right? Is, is it the long-term goal there? No, we don't want to be a broker. We want to go much deeper into the supply chain. You have in the ERP system, for instance, all the inventories data, and there are huge optimizations that can be reached here. So that's where we want to go, into really being integrated into the existing supply chain, building connections with ERP, transport management systems, which are incumbent softwares. But we don't want to be a broker in this transport. So give me an example of like uh, three different metrics that you could, you could tweak to improve if I have a shipment that results in a four-day delay. And, and what, what would your software enable me to then tweak to improve that? So if you need to organize a shipment and you need it to be very fast, you ask one of your freight forwarder, he tells you, OK, global transit time is 22 days. If you have no historical data, you're going to buy this. But if you have the historical data that this exact freight forwarder has in average four days of delay, you know that you won't take this freight forwarder. So delay rate is very key. Also, the analysis by route. You can have um, a shipment from Middle East to Antwerp that can be 22 days, and the reverse logistic can be much shorter. So all these data points are very key to organize the transport plan. I imagine this, the switch time for one of these shipping uh, operations coming on is very long. So that lead time is going to be a year, two years, possibly. So how are you going to survive in that, 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 that kind of long, long time span? Could you hear something? Uh, I couldn't hear. <laughs> my point was that the, to, to acquire these shipping customers, it takes a long time. 
Yeah. A very, very long time. Um, as long as time's turned around a tanker, maybe. But how are you going to survive in that time? It's a long lead time. So how are you going to survive you got as, as, a, as a business? Obviously, working with enterprises, we need to ramp up from first parameters to stage two, stage three in the roadmap, and to get more revenue as we ramp up. So there are long sales cycle, obviously. So that's why we need also investor money uh, to finance this sales cycle. And well, we're quite frugal. We don't spend that much money today. So that's how we are able really to ramp up step by step into their supply chain. And what we um, look for in ramping up is to go to another geography much more than integrating things door to door because it is more complex. All right, we're out of time. So one more round of applause for Wakeo.